bring in our regular panel now, David Gazard from DPG Advisory and the Executive Director of the Australia Institute, Ben Oquist. David, first to you, the situation in Sydney is a real concern at the moment. The numbers continue to rise. There are two Western Sydney hospitals, Blacktown and Westmead, not taking any more COVID patients. I spoke to the Paramedics Association earlier in the hour. They're saying their members are driving around trying to find a hospital to take their patients. I know we're talking about reopening, but goodness me, there's a quite a, an emergency situation that's got to be managed in the in the short term in terms of getting a cap on those numbers. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's, you know, if you, you go back over the last 18 months, this has been the task that's confronted the Western world, well, in fact, the whole world, including Australia. The, the, the idea was to flatten the curve um, and to suppress the virus. And that was exactly what it was designed to do. And that was to keep the pressure off hospitals and our medical system. Largely, we've succeeded at that. But, you know, as the virus has developed, as the situation has changed, we've seen a more virulent form, a mutation, the Delta strain, uh, that is, 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 uh, has got loose in the community, and that's putting pressure back onto the, uh, the health systems we were trying to protect. But the, the good news is the vaccine uh, seems to work uh, well against Delta, not perfectly, but well. And the more people get vaccinated, the, the more coverage we have across you know, the, the, the entire community. So that will continue to take the pressure off and allow the country to, re to reopen as we go forward once we hit those targets. Um, the targets have been set. I think it was the, the, the Doherty research, uh, the, the scientific approach to this uh, was the first in the world. Uh, so we, we've, done, we've done pretty much the best in the world in terms of keeping uh, the pressure off our hospitals. We've, we've had much lower death rates uh, than comparable countries across the world. I was looking at Canada yesterday. I think we've had, you know, approaching 900 deaths. They've had close to 30,000 deaths. The UK, of course, has had, you know, well, well, well in excess of 150,000 deaths. In the US, well over 900, uh, 600,000 deaths. So we've done exceedingly yeah. well here, and we now have uh, a roadmap forward that will keep us safe but help us to open up. Ben, the, as, as I said to David, there is this emergency short-term situation, though, of trying to get those numbers to, to come down somewhat in, in Sydney, up around 1,000, uh, Blacktown, Westmead, turning, uh, essentially not accepting COVID-19 patients as, as we speak this afternoon. That's right. I, I think this has got a long way to go, and some people have kind of misinterpreted the plan as a freedom day coming up and vaccination rates are going to have to be a lot higher uh, in, across the community before there's any uh, radical uh, opening up. And if you look at the Doherty plan carefully, um, it points out that that contact tracing capability is very important in um, limiting the damage of the virus, limiting hospitalizations, limiting deaths. And if contact tracing is not up to it or is overwhelmed, you've got a very different situation. And I've been struck by Andrew Barr's performance as Chief Minister here in the ACT, a very measured approach and a very worried about the, some of the misreading of the Doherty modelling. And of course, he points out a couple of simple things like uh, population figures need updating. Uh, effectively, you're not, don't have full protection from the vaccination until three weeks after your jabs, mm. that the, the vaccination rates need to be high in all, all areas of the community, disadvantaged uh, areas of the community or vulnerable areas of the community in particular. Yeah. So I, I think we've got to look carefully at this Doherty modelling and, and not rush to be thinking that vaccination rates are the, way, are, are, are the immediate way out. I don't think um, parents of children are going to want to let things open up when you've got a situation in New South Wales with the virus out of control and their children aren't vaccinated yet. So a long way to go. Yeah, but it is, it is a complex equation, David, as I spoke to Jackie Blackwell from a shadow pandemic, Victoria. 28 weeks her four kids have been out of school. Uh, I think there's a different view on these things depending on which state you find yourself, David. Well, you know, again, we're, we're in a situation where we have a political response that is armed by the best medical advice. So, you know... 
the, the Doherty research has been done over the last five months. It's the best in the world. It's, it's the first time this has been done in the world. And the vaccination rates are at the higher end. Um, Britain has opened up. Um, and while, while they've had infections, there have been much better outcomes. Um, so we're, we're not doing this in isolation. We're, we're not just using the ACT as a test case. Of course, every parent, like me, is worrying about their kids. Um, the, yeah. the vaccination for children is being discussed, but it is being discussed at National Cabinet, armed with the advice of the best medical experts we have in the country. Um, mm. No one, I think, is calling for a, a Freedom Day where it's just uh, absolute no. open slather. We've got a four-stage opening up uh, plan uh, that 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 only even starts before the entire country hits 80% double dose. So yeah. you know, no no one is sort of uh, calling for what for what Ben suggests, but we do have to find a way with full Zac vaccination as close to 80% as we possibly can, so we can start opening the country up. The bottom 20% uh, uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. It's no coincidence that we have a wages crisis in Australia. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas.